Happy Holidays and Merry Christmas. You're watching Drakewing Gaming. Oh, one moment. And... Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nery here from Drake Week Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with the Let's Play episode of Repeat, the remake. <laughs> I'll never get tired of saying that. But anyway, guys, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall I? Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes to entertain you. Let's jump right in. Alarm Chan, you are up. And let's go. How long did someone do another video? Okay, not that long ago. Alright, let's do it. Okay. <clears throat> this creepy friggin' thing. What the hell is this thing? It's, uh, not moving. I wave my hand in front of its face? It didn't move an inch. Was it even alive? Other students were walking around it as, as if it wasn't they even there. Maybe they couldn't see it, like how they couldn't see Echo or that ashy girl. Um, hello? C can you hear me? No response again. Eh, it doesn't even have ears. I tried poking it, but my fingers slipped right through like smoke. Hmm. Echo, are you there? Yo, Adrian, you called? Yeah, I'm glad to see you're awake inside my head. Just barely, your grogginess makes things kind of difficult. Anyway, what can I do for you? Well, first of all, what is this thing? Hmm? Is it dangerous or anything? I don't want some weird ghost wandering around campus and cursing people. One crazy spirit is enough for me. It's... a corrupted wish, I, I think. It must have done something terrible to its wisher to have festered into something like this. Although, it doesn't feel like it has any real power either. It's creepy, but it probably doesn't have the strength to do much damage. Heck, I doubt it can even move on its own. So are we just gonna leave it here? Not much else to do, really. You can't even touch it. I guess you're right. I really hope it doesn't end up hurting people. It's right inside campus, too. Well, it can't hurt people if it, if it can't even move. I don't think we have anything to worry about. Anyway, you better get going. You're late. Oh, shit! I still gotta meet up with Mr. With the, that Mr. Rokov guy. I sprinted down the courtyard, shooting the weird figure one last look. It hasn't budged a bit. I hope Echo was right about this. Well, there was no use worrying. Time to head to the office. Oh boy. She's here! Eek. Creepy as hell. Feels like something that would be in bleach. I've never been to this side of campus before. Even so, the area that held all the teachers, uh, all the teachers' offices always felt a little intimidating. Now let's see, which one was Mr. Rokov's office? Shouldn't be too hard to find. They were all in alphabetical order. Let's see, R, R... Hmm, his door was slightly ajar. I think I can hear someone familiar? I couldn't help but take a peek inside. And that's all the assignments. Are you still awake, Philip? Hmm? Yeah. Uh, of course. Good, because you'll want to hear what's next. I've taken the liberty to remove you from my law class and transfer you to, Mr. to Mrs. Corlise's digital and studio art class. What? Why? Am I feeling or... Quite the contrary, you're actually at the top of your class and outscored all your peers. Then why are you transferring me? Would you like the gentle answer or the honest one? Um... Honest it is, then. To be frank, you look absolutely miserable in every waking moment in my class, and those waking moments are quite rare. That... I'll be frank, Philip. I never had a student look so soul-suckingly numb. It makes me want to break down in tears every morning. You look like the perfect sad zombie student spreading the sad around. <sighs> How eloquent for a teacher. I'm sorry? Heh. <laughs> Soul-sucking aside, I think you'll be much happy in Mrs. Corlise's class. Your artwork is quite impressive. More importantly, you seem to actually enjoy it. I can't do that. My mother always pushed me to be a lawyer or a doctor or something more professional. You'll be the one who you'll be the one who lives and breathes your future career, not your mother. You deserve to do something that makes you happy, Philip. Think on it. Try something new. Gerani Academy summer program is an opportunity to dip your toes into something different after all. There was an awkward pause in the, in the office before Mr. Rokoff coughed loudly. Anyway, I believe our little session is almost finished. Onward to the next order of business. I believe our guest has arrived. Why don't you come in, Adrian? I jumped and practically stumbled into the door. Adrian, what are you doing here? Oh, I got a note that said I was supposed to be here. I, I wasn't eavesdropping or anything. Your eavesdropping is forgiven. Anyway, I called you both here to discuss a certain incident yesterday that you both witnessed. Would you two care to describe what happened between the quarrel between Miss between between Mr. Dorcas Dolores and the student Cecil? Oh, so that's what's going on. It sounded like Mr. Dolores was finally facing some consequences. Good riddance, too. That guy was an awful teacher. Was Philip at the incident yesterday, too? Sure seemed like it. I told Mr. Rokov everything that happened yesterday. 
from Mr. Dolores yelling at me to how Sissel stepped in to defend me and got manhandled as a result. I couldn't help but grin as I described how red Dolores got when his hair flew away in the wind. Behind me, Philip tried to muffle a laugh. I'm glad Adrian was there to step in and stop him. He really saved Sissel from Dolores. I felt my face grow a little red. I was there too, but I was in the back of the crowd and too tired to do anything. It's a good thing you were that you were there instead. <laughs> I didn't really matter, do I didn't really I really really do much either. I'm glad the school's actually do, actually doing something about Mr. Dolores though. There were a ton of other students who witnessed the whole thing, so there's no doubt he crossed the line. I hope I hope Dolores gets what's coming to him. Rest assured, Adrian, the staff and I will make sure Mr. Dorcas Dolores faces the proper. Philip shot the vice principal a doubtful look. Will he? I have my doubts. In fact, I think this whole meeting is a rather large waste of time. What is with that noise? Mr. Do Mr. Rokoff coughed awkwardly and tried to regain his composure. And what do you mean by that, Philip? Am I wrong? Dolores has never faced consequences for his previous behavior above a light slap on the wrist. I've done some digging, you see. It turned out his brother's the head of the school board. He has quite a bit of leverage in all these discussions. I assure you, Philip, that those rumors floating around aren't necessarily true. Really? Like how Dolores messed with the student contacts and made sure Cecil didn't receive mail from the academy? That's why Cecil didn't show up for the orientation on our first day. And what about the time before that? Dolores pulled some strings to make sure Cecil didn't receive any scholarships or financial aid. If it wasn't for Cecil's anonymous donor, he wouldn't even be in school right now. After all this, did Dolores receive a single punishment? No! Let's just face it. That rat's not going to face consequences unless he gets caught red-handed at something truly bad. A heavy silence hung in the room as Philip exhaled sharply. Mr. Rokov seemed at a loss for words. I didn't blame him. I didn't think I'd ever I didn't think I'd ever see Philip so cross. He was usually so lighthearted. Tell me, Philip, how do you know all this? How? <laughs> I guess I'm a bit nosy, and I have some very nosy friends. Sizzle's just a good guy trying to get his life back together. He doesn't deserve all this crap. Mr. Rokov glanced at his watch before returning to Philip with a defeated sigh. Well, I believe we discussed all we could here. I've kept you too long enough. Why don't you go get some breakfast before the dining hall closes? Changing the subject, huh? Despite my growling stomach, I felt a bit reluctant to leave. Philip wasn't as hesitant. He was already halfway to the door. Philip? What? I assure you that the staff and I will do our utmost to make sure justice is served. I hope so. Mr. Rokov stared grimly at Philip's retreating back until he disappeared from sight. After a while, he turned to me. His worried gaze made me a bit anxious. Adrian. Y yes, sir? Look after your friend for me, will ya? Philip's a, Philip's a responsible young man, but he's also known to cross a line for certain things. I'm just afraid he'll do something... rash. Make sure to be there for him if he does. I'll do my best, sir. By the time we arrived at the dining hall, it was already packed with students massacring each other for tater tots. Thankfully, there was still some food left. Philip and I grabbed all the eggs and toast we could carry and managed to snag an empty table. The moment we sat down, I smacked my face into the table with an exhausted sigh. It's only morning, but things were already heavy and tiring. Ugh, what a day. I felt a comforting pat, my, pat on my back and mumbled my thanks. Suddenly, something freezing pressed against the back of my- ah, It's cold as fuck! Wow, what a wimp! You alright there, Adrian? Philip passed me a glass of iced tea. I glared at it tiredly. Good morning to you too, I guess. Cecil, when did you get here? Philip dragged me over here while you were busy making out with the table. Speaking of which, Philip- uh, Speaking of which, Philip, uh, there are better ways of waking me up besides pressing iced tea to my neck. But you look like you needed to cool off a bit. <laughs> Cecil and I collectively groaned. Ah, it's too early for this shit. You're all a bunch of killjoys. I sighed and took a sip of my tea. It should be illegal to do to be this cheerful this in the morning. Flava! I spat my tea all over the table and formed a rainbow in the morning sun. This TV's in more bitter than my soul. Why the hell is this unsweetened? Philip nonchalantly took a bite of his toast as he opened up a newspaper. Sugar is bad for you. You know, Philip, the more I get to know you, the more you start sounding like an old man. A newspaper at this day and age? Hey, I didn't judge you for streaking in the dorms a few days ago. That, that wasn't... Is that how flirting works nowadays? Wow, Sissel, you better watch out. <laughs> I'll keep an eye out for him. How could you two be so mean to me? I thought we were friends. Mutual bullying is the path to friendship. Philip continued scanning the newspaper with indifference while munching on toast. 
Little guy seems pretty relaxed now that he's out of the office. Who would have thought he'd switch mood so quickly? I'm glad he settled down, though. It was weird seeing Philip so quietly furious. Cecil was buttering a bagel when something caught his eye. Hmm? Philip, it's on the front page. Oh, look, it's Philip, just wearing a mask. The Daily Muse. Boo! Come on, why would you make that pun? I glanced over curiously. The front page showed a large photo of a creepy guy in a hood. It says the black cat strikes again. Apparently he vandalized a corrupt businessman's home this time. The black cat? You don't know the black cat? Never heard of him. Is he famous? Oh, right. You're not from this side of town, are you, Adrian? The black cat's sort of like a local hero around here. Hero? The guy's a criminal, Cecil. Who cares? He'll always be a hero in my book. Anyway, Adrian, the black cat is this guy who pops out of the blue every now and then, every, and every now and then around here. He's a bit of a vigilante graffiti artist, an aggressive one. He sprays and vandalizes the homes and businesses of corrupt assholes around the neighborhood, expose them for the shit that they do. The paper says he's got a special interest in the Lorelei family's shady dealings. We don't target anyone who deserves it, really. His work brings a lot of media attention that usually ends up outing these people's crimes. Sure, sure what he's not doing, sure what he's doing is a bit illegal, but at least he's made some pretty big changes around here. He kind of sounds like an asshole himself if you really think about it. Oh yeah, he does, but the Black Cat's done a lot of great things for me. Like what? Well, this orphanage I used to live at. It was full of jackasses that starved the kids and never really paid attention to them. The environment was far from nurturing. I ran away the first chance I could, but I always felt bad for leaving the younger ones back there. And then a few years ago, the black cat just appeared out of the blue. He ransacked and, ta and tagged the orphanage from top to bottom. That place was front news for days as folks investigated every inch they could reach. Oh, I think I remember this on the news a few years ago. There was a full-on public investigation of the place and it got shut down and reformed, right? Yeah. A bunch of the twats working there got arrested for child abuse, and the city rebuilt the orphanage from the ground up. Sure, I'd left before any of this happened, but one of the kids I you know from this orphanage is finally living a happy life thanks to the black cat. He even got to start elementary school a few years ago. I never even got the chance. There was a pause as Cecil quietly caught his breath. He blinked as if suddenly realizing he was where he was in flushed red. Sorry, I rambled on a bit, didn't I? Sorry for ruining the mood. Anyway, the black cat's a cool dude. You've got to at least admit he's done some good things. Heh. <laughs> Anyone who can outrun the cops on a skateboard sounds pretty cool to me. So he's like Batman, but with spray paint. Sounds badass. Sort of? I guess you could say he's a... Catman? <laughs> Cecil and I groaned. You're ruining the mood, man. Catman doesn't really uh, roll off the tongue the same way. Excuse me? What do you have against cats? Hey, I never said... Well, looks like it's time for class. Can we save the cats versus bat argument bats argument for later? Philip pouted into his toast while Cecil heartily agreed. As the three of us headed to class, Philip was back to his old grinning self. I sure hope it stayed that way. <laughs> Hold me, me love. Okay. I was dreading our creative writing class. The thought of seeing Mr. Dolores already gave me a headache. Hmm, it looked like he wasn't here yet. Thank God. As Philip, Cecil, and I plopped onto our seats in the very back of the lecture hall, Mr. Rokov entered the classroom and approached us. Good morning, gentlemen. I hope you are well. Oh, hey, Vice Principal. Have you fired Dolores yet? I'm afraid I'm here for an entirely different reason. Sounds about right. Uh, Cecil, could you join me in the office right now? There's some matters that require your presence. Sure, I, I guess. What's it about? It's quite private. I'll explain everything in the office. Cecil shrugged and followed Mr. Rokov out of the lecture hall with mild confusion. I have a bad feeling about this. Well, I don't want to sound pessimistic, but that didn't look too good. Maybe they're trying to get Cecil's side of the story, too, like, like how they did with us this morning. Adrian, I admire your optimism. Or maybe you just have too little, Philip shrugged. The school hasn't given me any reason to be. Hey, cuties, how's it going? Owen leisurely dropped. Owen, Owen leisurely plopped down onto the seat next to Philip. He winked and lounged his arm around Philip's shoulder like an armrest. Philip looked nonplussed. Hmm? Oh, am I interrupting something? Well. 
Besides people's personal space? Not at all. Welcome to class, Owen. Ah, come on, little guy. I just missed you. You're always up so early and come back to the dorm so late. A little friendliness every now and then wouldn't hurt. Owen leaned over and rested his head on top of Philip's. He didn't seem to notice Philip quietly gritting his teeth. Sorry, you've made it rather difficult. But hey, at least now we can go back to our roommate bonding, am I right? He leaned into Philip's chair until their cheeks were almost rubbing together. Their whiskers tick tick tickled against each other from the close contact. Let me know if you want me to do anything for you. Anything at all. <laughs> uh, Owen, you might want to back down a little. Hmm? What? You jealous, Adrian? Philip let out a quiet hiss. Can I have my chair back? Oh, right, sure. Why is everyone so grumpy all of a sudden? Y'all need to let loose, live a little, you know? Where's the teacher? Is the class supposed to start right now? Ouch, now you're giving me the cold shoulder? You're breaking my heart. Owen, fl Owen inched a flirty hand onto Philip's thigh with a wink. I'm sure if you just open up a little more, we get along fine. Oh boy, you're pushing it, boy. You're pushing it. Whoa, what's with that look? That's your hint to piss off, Owen. Or is that not straightforward enough? Jeez, I was just trying to be nice. Nice? Nice? Do you have any idea how much of a pain you've been in the last few days? You have zero sense of boundaries. A damn preschooler knows how to behave better than you. I didn't think. You never do. It's a bit irritating, really. I told you again and again. Oh, hey, Owen. Back off a little, please. But no, let's keep creeping up on me. I'm sure I'll like you more then. Am I just a, am I just a new toy for you to play around with? Have you bothered wondering how you make other people feel? No, you just take what you want without a care in the world. You Lorelai's are all the same. I, I... Give me a fucking break. Huh? I need some air. Philip shakily stood up and stumbled out the room, as though in a daze. The room was silent and all eyes were on Owen. He looked stunned in disbelief. I was shocked myself, but now was not the time to worry about that. Uh, let's talk to Owen. Owen, are you alright? Owen blinked, still somewhat in a daze. I yeah, I'm fine. Just a little surprised, I guess. People around the room were starting to murmur and gossip amongst themselves. Which probably wasn't a good addition to the scenario. Hey, Owen, let's go for a walk. You look like you need some fresh air. Owen's eyes stared off into the distance, looking past me. Sh sure. I dragged Owen outside and away from all the chatter and judging eyes. He just stumbled along blindly behind me, still stunned from earlier. Owen, about earlier, I mean, Philip had a point. You really should start respecting people's boundaries. Not everyone's going to be into that. Granted, Philip was a bit harsh back there, but still. Nah, he was just being honest. I have been a bit of a pain. I just never realized how much I was bothering him. Heh. <laughs> it's been a while since someone tried to set me right. It feels strange. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Give a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye